Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to Forza Motorsport 4. Today is episode number 57. If you guys are enjoying the content, then be sure to leave a like, comment down below, subscribe, and feel free to hit that join button as it really does help support the channel. Hopefully, you guys enjoy. This episode was streamed live on YouTube. If you want to make sure to catch the streams, then be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation, or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. All right, so we are here for the sports car open. We're going to be taking the uh, Nissan 370Z. We're getting very close, actually, to the end of this main chunk of content. Um, which, I mean, it's taken almost a month. In fact, it has taken a month to do this. I'm hoping we'll get to the end of this by the end of next week. Um, but then we'll start moving on to... I believe we're going to move on to manufacturer events. Because we should have enough money that we can just rip through all of these. Um, but there will be quite a few events to go through once we get to those. Uh, but anyways, we're going to start with, obviously, the sports car open. Bernie's Alps, Maple Valley, Rally Depositano, Camino Valle de Montserrat, and then Bernie's Alps again. Let's get going. All right, here we go. Let's get going. Oh, is that tag your sponsorship up there? Look at that. Oh, look at that. Do you know, I think those little details that they actually have on, like, tracks and whatnot in racing games are so important. Fuck me, this Nissan's good. Oh, this is an absolute beast to drive. Come on. Keep it on the track, preferably. Very good, very nice. that a lot. Send a car over the apex mid-air in the corner. 100%. Of course he did. That's why they named the corner after him. Because nobody managed to do that in all the years beforehand. I ever did was jump over the ditch driving straight. <laughs> oh, that's great. Unbelievable. You know, cars aren't designed to go through ditches, hands. You should know this. <laughs> oh, I'm having too much fun.
Oh, that's what happens when you got a rear-wheel drive car. You're a little bit tail happy there. Jesus Christ, this Xbox has struggled a little bit. <sighs> Slightly concerned it may be on its way out, but as long as I can finish Motorsport 3, sorry, Motorsport 4, before it blows up, oh my god, this loading time. <laughs> uh, well, it's gone up to 4, so uh, I think it's somewhat working. <laughs> I don't have enough rams to try it out. Stop using chrome then! Use it. Ed Edge is actually really good because it uses a lot less ram than chrome does. And it has similar... Oh, what's it called? I've got 16 gigs of ram as well. My PC's only got 16. Oprah GX is the best gamer browser. I've tried Oprah and it just it it doesn't seem to cut it for me. Like I I don't get the extra feature. Like the extra features are cool and all, but like Discord the Discord features they added, pointless. Discord has an app. Yeah. Honestly, Oprah GX, it just feels pretty shit. Yeah. Well, that's why I stay away from uh, what watching magic, Chrome, because it it is just it fills you around like crazy. Oh shit. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty ironic. Oh my gosh. Way! Skirt round that corner. But no, Edge surprisingly is actually quite a decent browser now. Um, you know, pretty good customization like Chrome has. So if customization was an issue, 
with the old edge. Like, it's not with the new one, that's for sure. I haven't customised mine yet, but I am definitely need to. I don't know what to customise it with. Come on, Audi, get the fuck out of the way. You are not that fat. You are just a B-Tech Hurricane. Sometimes people like a little bit of customization. It's, it's nice to have something that's yours as opposed to just this generic tool. A little bit like with the stream avatars. We've got custom stream avatars. It's not generic stream avatars for the stream it's similar in a way customization is always a good option but as long as it's not favored over a lot of other things like actual usability it's one handed there we go Ah, oh, I got it. There we go. Got rid of it. We're at 37 views on the stream at the moment, which is absolutely crazy. Welcome everyone. Hopefully you are all enjoying the stream. And if you do want to help support the channel, feel free to uh, drop a like on the stream. Share the stream out. Share the video out. As it really does help support the channel. Adding and removing tools is good, but most people just throw up a random nice looking design pack. Yeah, I mean, even if that is the level of customization that something will give, it's just design packs. They're still better than nothing, in my eyes. I like to see some customization so I can make it my own. Or I can have a choice of how it looks, especially when... I definitely didn't press any of those buttons that just got pressed, but whatevs. Um, yeah, when it comes to actual customization, especially with the fact that you can customize Windows, if you can't customize the software, it just sticks out like a sore thumb. Yeah, that's a good shout. Mac OS has no customization. But at the, at the same time, I... I like the design aspect of Mac OS. I think it's quite a nice, clean design, but there isn't very good customization. It's just, it's not. Here's the issue with Apple, okay? Apple as a company, they could succeed so well if they didn't have a monopoly and such a closed ecosystem, right? If they opened up their ecosystem to a, a lot of outside devices and like supporting devices being able to use, I mean, you look at this and Android debate with uh, Android actually making those adverts. I don't know whether they're real or not, Issue with the Apple operating system for me is that it's too easy to level, but it's often difficult. That's understandable. I I can see like certain things are so simple on Apple. It's like, well, I can't do what I need to do because it's so simplified and it makes it difficult to do what I need to do. That does make sense. And I understand that. But me personally, from using Apple products, I found that Apple is all round, if I didn't give a shit about those little minute details that I don't like Apple about, I'd be on an iPhone. A hundred percent. Like, it is so easy. Like, some people just absolutely hate on Apple because it's Apple. Like, I'm an Android supporter because of the fact that Android is just so much easier with computers. Obviously, with this brand new 
type C cable it's definitely gonna force Apple to somewhat open up their abilities because there's no way that they can lock off being able to connect a device and use a device like that there's no way they can get away with that Uh, I don't know, it's, it's definitely a, a weird situation that Apple's in at the moment. They could quite easily get more sales if they unlocked their phones. I do use iPad regularly at work, but I can't imagine myself actually having it as a daily. Yeah, that's fair enough. I will be honest, this um, drama that Apple's in at the moment with the new iPhone 15, the fact that the glass... I think Apple's going to get in a lot of trouble with a lot of people because of this new iPhone 15. Because the back glass is so easy to break, it's unreal. Like, people have been able to break the back glass of the iPhone 15 with their fingers. Like, I'll, I'll be 100% honest, I don't think glass on the back of a phone is ideal anyways. Um, I don't see why you would want glass on the back of your phone, but... I suppose it means it's got some more scratch resistance in a way, because glass is a lot more difficult to scratch than plastic. So, I suppose that makes sense. But if the glass is so easy to break that you can break it with your fingers, what is the point in having back glass then? And especially with the fact uh, Apple announced that it's going to be cheaper to repair this phone. They, they've definitely designed it so that it's easier to repair, which I mean fair play to Apple. But normally they would still have a ridiculous price point, but apparently they've said, like, to repair the glass of the phone, it's going to be, like, 60-70% cheaper for them to repair it. And I think they know that the phone is prone to breaking, and that they would be in a lot of trouble if they didn't do that. But I think they're also going to get in trouble because potentially that they've done that because they know it's going to break and they've deliberately made a poor product and rather than fixing it, have just gone, oh, we'll make it cheap to fix. As opposed to making the product good. So I feel like there's going to be a lot of drama uncovering very soon with Apple. Obviously, Apple will just brush it off and move on. But... Because if you scratch the rear, people get their own case for it. I, me personally, I'm not a fan of scratching my phone. I, I would like to keep it in as good condition as possible. And I do, I take care of it and I look after it. But I always get a case. I always get a case for it. The issue is the phone that I've got at the moment has broken. There's a little crack on the plastic shell and it's broken when I dropped it through the case like the case didn't even have a scratch on it but it still broke which meant it it must have been a weak point because there's no way in hell that a case even if it lets through some of that force there's no way that you can crack a phone case unless it was a weak phone case like case to the foot actual phone not the phone case you know what i mean the plastic bit Oh, Xiaomi phones. I've, I've heard they're actually really solid. If it wasn't for the amount of bloatware that Xiaomi actually added to the current phone, I would have got one. But Xiaomi phones, I found they've, there's a lot of bloatware on it. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.